Welcome everyone to Mets Baseball Recap for July 31st, the last day of the month. The Mets taking on the Cincinnati Reds. The Mets in need of a win. They filed yesterday and they definitely needed a win. Today was Hall of Fame Day. The Mets inducting Ron Darling, Agaro Alfonso, and Matlock into the Mets Hall of Fame. Uh, I'll have another video talking about Agaro Alfonso because I grew up watching Alfonso. Um, but we'll get to the Mets recap now. So things start real early for the Mets in the bottom of the third. Uh, Dury will get the Mets first hit of the night with a double into the gap. And then Rich Hill trying to help himself. He bunts over Drury to third. So now Drury's at third base with one out. Villar batting and Villar gets a broken bat base hit to drive in Drury for the first run of the game. Unfortunately, Hill would suffer uh, and give up some runs and basically fall behind three to two, three to one, then four to one. But the Mets, the Mets had something different tonight. The Mets had something going for them tonight. And that was Javier Baez making his Mets debut tonight with runner on first hit his first home run in the bottom of the six to make this game four to three. And, um, this fan, this fan is going to be the image that a lot of people have because it felt good at that moment to see a new guy being able to get a base hit. But we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The game is still 4-3. to three. McNeil, unfortunately, lost his hitting streak and uh, by taking a walk. But win over uh, hitting streak, that's for sure. Um, they will pinch, uh, pinch run for McNeil with Guillaume. And thanks to a wild pitch, Guillaume will end up taking second base. This will bring Javier Baez, who we were hoping to have some theatics. Unfortunately, he struck out. Then McCann came out to bat, and he struck out. And Dominic Smith, they brought him the left-hander, which was stupid. Um, Dominic Smith hits a single to tie this game. And then we go to the top of the 10th inning. And I know people have been so worried about Diaz. And, and, and I it's understandable. I get it. I understand. But you got to trust in Diaz. And while I do not agree in putting him in non-safe situations, you know, this is more of a safe situation than anything because you got to make sure you get no runs here. And, you no, know, he ended up uh, giving up uh, a wild pitch or a pass ball. I forgot how they, they called it during the thing. Um, I think they said it should have been a pass ball, uh, but he called it a wild pitch. Anyway, he ended up giving up a walk. Then he struck out the next batter. And then he struck out the batter after that one. And then we got the last batter to pop up and fly out. And left the runners stranded at first and third. And the Mets will go into the bottom of the 10th inning. Tie game. And here come the three attics. Pilar will be the Mets ghost runner on second base. And Drury, knowing full well that whatever he does, he just got to hit the ball to the right side because that's where the hole is. And if they do catch it on the right side, it at least moves the runner up. And he got the base hit to win this game. Walk off, base hit, single for Brandon Drury. And the Mets win. 5-4. to four. Good job of the Mets. And... You know, this is the type of win that just could propel the team, especially because you got new blood in here who already made a huge impact. And uh, Jury, he just keeps proving why he deserves to play. And trust me, um, we're going to talk about the Mets lineup because the Mets lineup is still a bad lineup to begin with. So let's talk about the 0-4s. McNeil went 0-3, for but he did get the walk at the end. He did lose his hitting streak, as I said. McCann was over three. He struck out in the in the in when we desperately needed him in the ninth. Um, Pilar was over four, and, uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of the starting lineup. Now I felt it was weird. Nimmo should have been playing, but apparently he was hurt or not feeling up to playing, which is why he wasn't playing, why he wasn't in the lineup. So I could forgive. The lineup not including Nemo because Nemo should have been there instead of Pilar, but it is what it is. But the lineup still needs a good change because 
the bottom of the lineup just didn't do anything until the very end of the game. Um, uh, Smith getting that hit in the ninth inning was basically the only hit that bottom of the lineup really did. Dury should have been higher in this lineup, but he's not. I, I don't know why. He was batting eighth. Um, I guess because he's a new guy. And they got He's still untested, but he's proving he could hit. He's batting 322. So tomorrow's lineup, I want to see him higher up. I want to see him batting anywhere near the top because he don't belong in the A spot. In terms of pitching, Rich Hill gave the Mets five innings, pitched, uh, gave up four runs on five hits, two home runs. Uh, Diaz, uh, the, the other Diaz, came in, pitched a solid inning. Femia gave the Mets a solid inning. Lugo, though, he did struggle a bit. He gave up two hits. Uh, one of them was to... Uh, to Votto, uh, and he almost smacked it out of here, hitting off the very top of the wall. Uh, Loop would then come in to get it out. Uh, Lugo did strike out the next two batters, so good on Lugo, but then they brought Loop just to get the final out of that inning. May came in and gave the Mets uh, an inning's work. Uh, did a good job, two strikeouts. And Edwin Diaz got the win. Uh, like I said, 10th inning, kind of like a safe situation because you don't want those runs to come in. So, good job on Diaz on that one. Uh, the Mets take on the Cincinnati Reds tomorrow in the finale of this series. Stroman goes for the Mets. The Mets improved to 55-48. and 48, And the Mets have a lot of work still ahead of them. They got to win games. The good news is the Phillies lost. The Braves won. Uh, the Braves are now four games. Uh, and the Phillies that fell to four and a half. So, just got to keep winning. That's uh, the main goal here. Keep winning games.